I knew what I wanted, but I did not communicate my boundary. I suffered. But at the end of the day, there was no way I could help you and me at the same time when my life depended on it. That is not selfish. That is self-care. And that is a healthy boundary. Yay, you're here. Welcome to my channel. I am Kristen, and I'm so excited to help nourish your soul on how to protect you from getting violated from people with their words, social media, commentary. This video is all about how to set boundaries and create a safer space for your emotions, your thoughts, your feelings, and your relationships. I want to just dive right in. So a lot of you know that I used to be a psychology professor, um, used to be a therapist. I have a lot of used to be's um, and sometimes those used to be's are the only conversations that people know how to have with me and you have to learn what I have learned is I have to stop putting a lot of commas just like how we have a lot of running tabs on our phone it drains the energy of the phone I've had to learn how to put a period on something and also swipe certain tabs up out of my phone and swipe certain tabs up out of my life the reason why we have so many tabs open is because we do not set a boundary. A boundary is a line or limit that is communicated to show where something stops and begins and something that should not be crossed. Step one, when you are trying to set a boundary, you have to first know what you want and then you must communicate your needs. And now I say that um, like it's one package because some of you are in relationships right now you're entertaining people on hinged on tinder you're meeting people at the gym you are giving people your time and you feel violated when they only want you for your body they only want you for a meal what i like to call an m, &M somebody who wants a meal and a mat meaning they only want a meal and a place to sleep and once you once they get what they need from you they treat you like medicine when do you use medicine you only use medicine when you're feeling sick, but you tend to put those tools in the, in the cabinet when you're healthy. Some of you are being violated because people are only pulling you out when they are sick, but not when they are healthy and nourished and flourishing. And sometimes, yes, it's because of what you have done, but you are no longer reaping the benefits of the seeds you have sown because you're trying to save everyone else and not save yourself. So the first thing is, what do you want? What do you want in your career? Some of you, you may want to make a certain amount of money and you think it takes going to college and you want to do you want to do your research because it may not take that. We are living in a time where people are going to college, graduating, getting the same type of jobs they would have gotten out of high school, getting in debt. It's preventing them from getting cars, houses, because that debt is on their credit. And now we're, we're struggling to pay this debt. We're in a pandemic. You really want to know what you want. And you cannot go off of what other people are telling you. It's really easy to give advice to people for situations you have never been in. And you have got to learn to stop taking constructive criticism from people who don't construct anything. So step one, know what you want and communicate your needs. Oftentimes when we feel violated, when a boundary has been, um, a boundary is violated is one, usually the boundary is not communicated. We assume. Now, please remember this. My father always taught me this. People who assume live a dangerous life. So the reason why you are constantly being violated in your boundaries, and when I say violated, I don't necessarily mean like physically or sexual abuse. Those are some ways boundaries are violated. But people who keep asking you for money, every time you move, people come to live with you. And you're wondering, how come I don't have peace of mind? How come I don't have time for just me? It's because you don't know you want it and then you have not communicated it to other people so you keep giving your keys to your family members you keep letting people borrow your car you keep paying for everyone's meals instead of setting a boundary so know what you want and communicate your needs and so you're saying like well how do i actually communicate my needs how do i communicate my boundaries well i'm glad you asked um step two it's the tone of voice please remember that it's not so much about the message it's about the delivery Sometimes, especially as an entrepreneur, when you are charging a price, um, when I first started, which is amazing, I started off really in entrepreneurship as a poet. So I would get paid to do um, poetry engagements and then it turned into motivational speaking engagements. And I will never forget this. Um, I spoke to the foster youth of Norco um, School District. Shout out to Norco. And um, 
I was just speaking and I was doing so amazing. Um, they called the superintendent down and he came down and he listened to me and they said, wow, we are so impressed. If you need a job, we will give you a job. I was like, wow. I go home and I get a phone call um, from this huge organization, Dare to Be Aware Mental Health. They said, we're having a huge conference and you were referred to us from Norco School District. They were impressed and we'd like to book you. What is your lowest rate for um, undeserved minority students in high school? This is where assumptions, people who assume live a dangerous life. I'm thinking this is going to be like, you know, 30 kids at a high school. So I assumed, right? And I said $400. Anytime you are dealing with money, you want to get on the phone. You want to get on the phone and you want to talk to them and see what the stipulations are. I already said $400 and then we got on the phone. And when we got on the phone, they said, they said yeah, it's going to be like a thousand people. And I was like, a thousand? There's no way I would speak to a thousand people for four hundred dollars and i lived in nashville tennessee at the time and the event was in norco so i was gonna have to pay for my own flight and but because i didn't know how to communicate my boundary i just was trying to be accommodating i was like oh i just want to be a good speaker so they'll book me again um and so in our negotiation i felt very uncomfortable um and then i end up canceling a week before the event and they were like oh no like why are you canceling i said i can't do this i also require payment upon arrival and they were like we don't do deposits and we don't do payment upon arrival we will mail mail your check and you'll get it two weeks after the event i was like i can't do that so i made them sign a contract saying they would have payment on arrival and i said you know when i canceled i was like they were like why i was like this does not seem like the pros are going to outweigh the cons seems like there's a lot of cons um i'm not gonna pay for my own hotel and my own flight and they were like okay we'll pay we'll pay for your flight and i was gonna stay with my aunt um i, I was staying with my aunt who lived in norco as well so on accident somebody emailed what i was being there were two speakers a morning speaker and then i was i did a workshop and um the afternoon i was the keynote for the afternoon they accidentally emailed me the invoice for both speakers i was being paid four hundred dollars for a thousand students a workshop and a keynote and this white man was being paid thirty five hundred dollars for one keynote when you feel violated like that i was so upset because it let me know they had the money people always have the money and if they don't have it they will go get it but I was so offended that I did not speak up for myself. I did not set the boundary of, okay, I require a deposit. I require flight, hotel. I require a rental car. I require all these things because it inconvenienced me. And then when I got there, I blew the house down at that speaking engagement. People were like rushing me. I was autographing arms. And they came up to me in front of the kids and said, we don't have your check. Oh, and then they didn't pay for my baggage. So I had to pay $60 out of my own to pay for my luggage. They were supposed to cover that. They said, um, we don't have your check. It's going to be mailed in two weeks. I said, you are in direct violation of our contract. But they were sneaky because they I was there from morning until evening. And they didn't mention it until I did all the work. And they mentioned it in front of the kids so that I wouldn't blow up. And I was like, this is so shady and underhanded. Um, it took me four months to even try and get in contact with them. They stopped answering my emails. I asked them to reimburse me the $60. And they were like, we need the original receipt in order to... I said, you guys, this was something you fell off on. You are the ones who need to provide this. And I never got paid that $60. Um, and I will never do business with them again. But what I learned from that, it only takes me one time. To learn a lesson and I will not repeat that the level of distress to know that I could have made $3,500 and I'm worth way more than that but because I was trying to assume they didn't have money because I tried to assume um, that they wouldn't give me more money if I asked for it and because I did not communicate a boundary I knew what I wanted but I did not communicate my boundary I suffered because of it so I hope you learn that the power of setting boundaries, especially when it comes to entrepreneurship um, and money management, you have to know what you want and you have to communicate your needs. Now, point number two, how you communicate your needs is what I like to call, I learned um, 
in, when I was getting my master's for marriage and family therapy, one of my professors calls it the cup of coffee tone of voice. Um, imagine you're at a bistro and a waiter just comes up to you and she says, uh, would you like a cup of coffee? She's not really perky, like, would you like a cup of coffee? And then she's not like, would you like a cup of coffee? It's a very neutral tone. Would you like a cup of coffee? That is the tone of voice that you want to utilize, especially when having difficult conversations. Now, a lot of you, when you're having difficult conversations, when you're upset, when you're angry, we tend to get aggressive. We tend to smack the hands. We tend to point. We tend to yell. And what happens? The person who needs to receive our language and narrative gets defensive. So they don't even hear you because they're just trying to protect themselves and defend. Your goal is to be heard. Even if they don't agree, the goal that all of us are seeking in communication is to be heard. And the bonus is to be understood. So when you are communicating, um, especially as a therapist, um, I've had to have some very difficult conversations and that cup of coffee tone of voice allows me to ask difficult questions like, so when was the last time you had been molested? Cup of coffee tone of voice. It doesn't get shaky, it doesn't get upset, it, it's a very neutral tone of voice. So when you are communicating a boundary, sometimes you are so afraid of hurting other people because of the tone of voice you're even using in your own mind. When you can get that tone of voice, you can then communicate. Remember, you can deliver the message effectively. So use a cup of coffee tone of voice. Um, number three, I learned this in acting class. As you know, I'm a trained actress. I have my bachelor's in theater and I went to the most amazing program, um, Cal State Long Beach. Um, I would highly recommend it. But my professor, Hugh O'Gorman, taught us success is doing what you wanted to do. So after every scene, after every play, he would ask us, did you do what you wanted to do? Because at some point, you are not going to meet everyone else's criteria. You are not going to do or meet um, certain expectations that sometimes other people were hoping and betting on you for. But when you write down what you want to do and actually do it, that is a definition of, of success. Because we stop placing a lot of judgment and a lot of value on a lot of the things that we're doing. For example, um, I recently... I'm getting back in the dating pool um, and I went on a date and the reason why I didn't feel nervous or scared um, jumping back into this is because one, I had already written down and decided what I was going to do. A successful date to me was getting there, being kind, not hitting, not, you know, nudging because I used to my my how I used to flirt with guys. I was like Helga from Hey Arnold, right? I used to be like move it football head and then be like, ah! I used to roast guys, I used to sock them, hit them. That was, that was my way of flirting because I didn't have language to communicate my feelings in a safe way. So I was like, I'm not gonna be physical. Um, I'm not talking about any exes. I'm not talking about any past situationships. I'm not talking about past hurt. I'm not saving anybody. I'm not doing any therapy with anyone. I'm not talking about my finances. I'm not talking about my family. I'm not going into any trauma. I'm not listening to their trauma. I'm going to leave. I'm not kissing nobody. I'm not any, I'm setting boundaries. Um, I'm going to listen um, and I'm going to make eye contact and I'm going to be very appreciative and I'm going to posture myself so they know that they need to pay. And I did exactly that. I had an amazing date. I went to a vegan restaurant with another gentleman. Um, we had so much in common. I learned something. He showed me some people on Instagram that are going to be very profitable for Dear Athletes, my company. Um, but I also set a boundary. I was not going to talk about dear athletes. I didn't. I just said I'm in the sports industry now, but I didn't mention my company. Why? Because I'm I'm taking a, a little bit of a break. When I'm on, when it's the weekend, I don't work on the weekend. So I just mentioned that without mentioning my job. And I left the date feeling so successful because I did what I wanted to do. Whether he calls back, whether he messages me back, I was successful because I did what I wanted to do and how many of you don't feel successful because you one you don't even know what you want to do you have not defined success for yourself and you put your value and worth in the hands of someone else now of course this gentleman did reply told me he got home safely made sure I got home safely but if he did it I already felt like a winner and a champion one I didn't let um I didn't let fear of my past, I didn't let anger, I didn't let um, negative stereotypes prevent me from getting to know someone. 
I also gave myself permission to try again. But I knew I was successful because I knew what I wanted. I communicated my needs with myself um, and I did what I wanted to do. So make sure you understand that definition of success. Did you do what you wanted to do? This is going to require you to slow down a little bit, write down and or just be very aware, speaking it out loud. What is it that I want to do? And make sure that you actually do it. Now, I want to share some things that have been super helpful and nourishing for me. Um, I'm on vacation. I was in LA. Now I'm in Dallas. Um, it's just been very nourishing. Uh, my friend, Asmira, who's like the nourishing queen, she just reminded me when I told her I was going on a date, she said, I'm so happy for you. It sounds like you're filling up your love tank. And I was like, the love tank? She's like, yeah, the love tank. And that doesn't have to be just with romance. It has to do with being with people who nourish your soul, people who love on you, being around friends, being around sisterhood, getting around family, filling up your love tank. And so when it comes to setting boundaries, think about your love tank. Who takes away from your love tank and who pours into your love tank? Keep that in mind. Is this conversation getting ready to take away from your love tank? Some of you, you can't handle the debate, not because you're ignorant to what's going on, but because you know that it's draining for you. You don't have to participate in those conversations or watch it. You don't have to be on social media. You don't have to talk to that certain family member that is extremely toxic and triggering. Are they taking away from the love tank? Now, when she said that, she's like, I'm so proud of you for getting out there um, and filling your love tank. And I was, I just felt so like, wow, I felt very seen and very heard. Now, that one was successful. And then another guy asked me out and this was unexpected. I was talking to my friend's brother and I was just spitting game to him about like a life and entrepreneurship. And my friend filmed it. She filmed it and posted it on her Snapchat. And mind you, I didn't know she did that. And I was in my pajamas. I had my braids up and my glasses on. I was looking like six different types of rough. Um, but a guy watched it and he replied on her snap with like the heart eyes emoji. And she was like, what does that mean? And he was like, yo, she's been mad truth. And my friend goes, do you want to take my friend on a date? And he was like, send me a picture of her. And she sent me, she sent him a picture of me and he was like, tell her to text me. So I text him and he responds like every three hours. So I'm like, okay, that's fine. The next day he's like, hey, good morning. Um, You know, that's cool. I'm free to hang out today if you are. I said, oh, hey, that would be great. I'm free from two to five. Does that work for you? He said, yeah, that works. Two hours later, I was like, okay, well, where do you want to meet? Two hours later, he replies, I don't know, somewhere where we can sit down. Okay, for me, I'm already like, okay, so you're not really leading. You're not giving me any idea of where we're going to go. Okay, fine. I find a Starbucks and I said, hey, here's a Starbucks close to us. Here's the address. He takes another two hours to reply. Now it's three o'clock. Remember, I'm free from two to five. And he's like, um, is today the only day you're free? I'm like, yeah, I have a meeting at 530. Does this time work for you? Four o'clock comes. I don't hear from him. Five o'clock comes. So that means we can't hang out because I'm only free from two to five. So five o'clock comes and I was like, okay, you didn't communicate to me that you couldn't make it. You didn't communicate to me to let me know you were on your way. You told me that this time worked for you. This is someone, one, who cannot communicate on my level. This is someone who does not show up. And so I'm not entertaining it. I don't need, it's just not going to work. So instead of me leaving a comma, I put a period on it. I text him in front of my friend and I just, I said, hey, so us meeting up together is not going to work due to lack of communication. And then I put the peace sign emoji. I sent it. Then I blocked him and then I deleted the thread. Now, some of you may be thinking like my friend, oh, wow, that's so harsh. Give him a chance. No, you may be used to settling, but I'm not. I will protect my heart 
at any cost. I already know what I want. I need somebody. This doesn't mean he's a bad person. He's just not the right one for me. I need somebody who can communicate and won't leave me hanging, wandering and confused. Like if you're going to make it or not, you told me you were available. And even if he's, if him saying, oh, well, is today the only day you're free? Well, then you need to communicate. Hey, I can't make it. So apparently um, I went out to my, my, I had a girl date, like with my friend who's a girl. I had an amazing time. We went to dinner. We went axe throwing. Amazing. She, she, I come back and my friend's like, oh, he texted me like, your friend, your friend isn't, your friend didn't text me back. And I was like, tell him because he flaked. And she was like, yeah, well, you, you flaked and you bailed on her. He was like, no, I thought she was going to call me. Why would you assume that I'm going to call you? When we are texting each other, you take two and a half hours to reply to each of my text messages and you just assumed I would call you even though I gave you the time and location? People who assume live a dangerous life. She said, um, yeah, no. And he said, can you have your friend call me? I said, I'm not. So she just replied to him, LOL, okay. Why am I proud of myself? Because I was open. I knew what I wanted and I didn't settle. And this happened in front of my friend. Sometimes when you set a boundary, it's not just for you, but it's teaching people around you. When people are, especially in dating, the beginning is when you're supposed to be showing your peacock feathers, showing your best. And even if you don't believe like, oh, I'ma just be me, I'ma just do me. I don't wanna do that. I don't want the miscommunication. I don't want the, I don't hear from you. I don't. I don't know if we're going to meet. I don't know if you're going to show up. I'm not dealing with that. So if that's something you're comfortable with, sir, be comfortable over there. But we will not be playing that game over here. Um, and so that's something, that's a great example of setting a boundary. I let this person know that this isn't going to work. I didn't just ghost them. But I also didn't need any more narrative from them. So that's why I blocked, I deleted, and I moved forward. This was such a beginning and I made it the end. Um, another thing that I experienced was there were some um, a certain amount of people, um, family and a lot of friends who felt like I abandoned them. Um, if, for those of you who know my story, I you know I used to go by another name. When I went to USC, I had a very traumatic experience, so much grief and loss. Um, even when I was cheering and just starting clubs, and after I graduated with a master's degree. It was really hard for me. Like I was um, in a very toxic living situation. I was in toxic flirtationship. Um, I was not okay mentally or emotionally. And I was couch surfing and kind of living out of my car. Um, and there was, you know, there were some people who helped me and took me in um, until I got a job in Nashville. So since I've left, I've been doing so much healing on myself. I've changed my name from Jay, which is what I used to go by, to Kristen. That's a big deal. I used to wear contacts, all these things, right? Um, and so some people have expressed like, oh, I just feel like you up and abandoned me. I feel like, you know, I was really there and you just ditched. You just, you talk to me all professional now. And if when the minute guilt and shame were trying to enter inside of me, I had to remind myself, I needed me more than you needed me. I needed me more than you needed me and your power should not come from me. I no longer feel guilty for people who want to be saved by me when they choose not to save themselves and let God save them. I am not your God. I am not your savior. And to every woman, especially every Caribbean, West Indian and African American woman who has been taught to bear the burdens of other people, I want you to give yourself permission to stop and save yourself. Why is it that every other cultural group gets to cry, they get to marry rich, they get to be taken care of, and we don't? I come out of agreement with that. I do not have to answer the phone. I don't need to give you free business advice when you don't even check up on me to see how I'm doing. I don't have to hear about your drama that you choose to stay in. I no longer waste my breath on people who, one, choose to be dysfunctional, choose not to change and most importantly i am not a trash can i am not a place for you to throw up and vent your trash onto me sometimes i will provide a trash can for you but you are not allowed to throw up on me 
So to everyone who's like, oh, but my family and my friends, pray for them. And I do pray for these people. But at the end of the day, there was no way I could help you and me at the same time when my life depended on it. That is not selfish. That is self-care. And that is a healthy boundary. Sometimes when you get into this new boundary, um, it may feel like you are being selfish but most importantly it may feel like you are becoming more and more lonely and I would love to tell you this when I stopped doing mini therapy sessions with all these family and friends who kept calling me for advice and calling me to talk about their relationship when I stopped answering the phone for their drama they stopped calling meaning that's all they were there for so I would rather you be here for me instead of being here for what you think I can do for you because that's not love. I can love you unconditionally with boundaries. I can love you unconditionally with boundaries. And the last point that I've realized is in this notion of setting boundaries, um, and this is something my friend Azmira brought up to me as well, be careful that your boundaries do not turn into punishing. So another gentleman wanted to take me out on a date and I was like, we, we set up a time, we set up a time um, and he was like, so let's say we set up a time, okay, at five, around three, I don't hear from him, four, I don't hear from him, five, I don't hear from him, so, you know, I didn't go to the date, I don't hear from him the next day, then the next day, this fool gonna text me. Oh, I just want to let you know how beautiful you are. You are so beautiful. I know you're probably sleeping. It's three o'clock in the morning, but I hope this puts a smile on your face. Um, are you free and available to get um, lunch tomorrow at one o'clock? I was awake. I texted this boy. I, I, I drafted a text that said, thanks, but you bailed on a date and you didn't say anything and I don't hear from you for a day and now you're texting me like everything's okay where I'm at in my life I trust my instincts and my first impressions and you know I think you're a cool sax player but you and us you and I meeting in person is not going to work or happen thank you and then I thought about am I punishing him am I punishing this person for not communicating with me and so because I'm trying to make sure that I am setting a boundary, the point of a boundary is I'm not punishing you, I'm protecting me. But you have to make sure that your protection doesn't turn into punishment. So what did I do instead of assuming? I asked a question. I said, thanks, smiley face. Um, you bailed on our date and I haven't heard from you in a couple, in a, in a day and now you're hitting me up like everything's okay, question mark, laughing emoji. And he responds, Hey, yeah, I'm really sorry. He said that his mom fell in the bathtub and he had to take care of her and she's good now. Um, and he he apologizes for not communicating. Thank you. Now, where I'm at in life, I pray that's not a lie. And if it is, then there's a lot of issues on you where you had to lie about your mom. But hey, I'm just going to believe the best. So I said, hey, thank you for responding and clarifying. Um yeah i'm free tomorrow at one the next day one o'clock comes at 11 he's like hey um i'm uh, do you want to go at one i was like yeah sure 12 30 comes i'm like hey are we meeting up 12 45 i call him he's like hey yeah i just deposited my check and um the money's not going to be available till tomorrow and i don't want you to have to to worry about that so can we just meet tomorrow Sure, sure. We can meet tomorrow. It's fine. Let me tell you what I'm practicing, okay? I don't have expectations of a lover or a partner from him. So I'm giving him friend quality, friend time, and friend expectations. He's already disqualified as a partner, which is why I'm not cutting him off as quickly. He is in um, like music and poetry, so I'm like, oh, this would be a great connection. That's where I'm going with it with. Um, and I'm learning to not assume, ask questions, not punish. If he doesn't show up tomorrow, then he's going to get the. <laughs> but I know 
I did what I wanted to do. I wanted to be kind. I wanted to be helpful. Um, I wanted to practice um, and be curious about if I am punishing. Um, and then the guy that my friend, you know, kind of hooked me up with, finds me on this other thing and connected there too. But um, I hope that you take some time to really know what you want and not be afraid of what you want. Not what you think you deserve, not what you think you need, what you want. Know what you want, practice communicating your needs um, with the cup of coffee tone of voice. Um, and I also pray that you really take time to fill your love tank and find out what activities help you fill your love tank. Um, and be careful to set your boundaries. Really take time to fill your love tank and find out what activities help you fill your love tank. Um, and be careful to set your boundaries with peace and not punish others. And understand that you need you more than they need you. Put your own oxygen mask on. And I pray that you have fruitful friendships and relationships um, and a healthy relationship with yourself. I'm Kristen. Um, if this video was helpful, if it was nourishing, if it gave you any type of wisdom or education, all I ask is that you subscribe because it's a great way to say hello and thank you. And please hit the bell notification. And I would also appreciate it if you just shared this video with someone who you think um, struggles with boundaries or needs to know what boundaries are and would really benefit from this video. So if you could share it on your Facebook, on your Twitter, on your Instagram, that would really appreciate, I would really appreciate it. And comment below what are some things that you say to set boundaries with other people. And I'll probably do another video on actual quotes that I use. Um, as well, but please comment below and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.